George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Last week, in order to get the part of a husband in a picture, I invited a movie producer to the Burns home and pretended to be Gracie's husband. Together, we convinced the producer that I was a dull, uninteresting married man. <laughs> Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? <clears throat> well, if you think that's unbelievable, we also convinced him that George was an irresistible lady killer. So he forgot me and hired George to play a wolf. This news has just been released, and so for further details, we take you to the NBC newsroom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Joy reporting your last-minute news. Flash. Movie producer Lauren Sherwood dropped a bombshell on Hollywood tonight when he announced that the most coveted screen role of the year, that of the wolf in the new Betty Grable picture, would go to a sensational new screen lover, George Burns. Friends of Sherwood had expected him to cast Bill Goodwin in the role of the wolf who chases Miss Grable, a part which Goodwin has rehearsed for years. All Hollywood is caught. <laughs> says Luella Parsons. In my humble opinion, a picture starring George Byrne should have everything. It'll need it. <laughs> There's movie producer Georgie Jessel. Many new ideas have come out of the war. Casting George Burns as a wolf is a revolutionary war idea. By that I mean it would have been a great idea during the Revolutionary War. <laughs> when told that her new leading man would be George Burns, Betty Grable had this to say. <laughs> Oh, darling, did you hear the news on the radio? Sherwood has just announced that he's co-starring you with Betty Grable. Really? He must be out of his mind. I'm no movie star. But you can be, dear. You're loaded with sex appeal. Oh, don't be silly. Let him get some guy like Gregory Peck. Oh, pooh. How can you compare a peck to a man who has it by the bushel? <laughs> oh, forget it. I'm not for pictures. George, have you ever studied yourself in the mirror and seen how really handsome you are? That straight nose, that square jaw, those perfectly formed chins. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm gorgeous. Yeah, I mean it. You've got everything any leading man on the screen has. I'll prove it to you. Just name one. All right. Charles Boyer. Charles Boyer. What's he got? What's he got? How about those eyes? You've got just as many. <laughs> it's not how many. It's what he can do with them. Well, there he's not even in the same class with you. One look from your deep, smoldering pools of passion would make a woman forget her husband. <laughs> look at me. I'm looking. Come closer, Fred. Fred? Yeah, oh. <laughs> now, you, you see, you made me forget my husband. Gracie, look, granted I might have a certain amount of charm, but could I handle the acting part of a picture role? I knew you were going to say that, and I'm ready for you. What do you mean? Well, I have a little scene here that I wrote just for you. You run the entire gamut of emotions in it. Oh, Gracie, I'm not... Oh, what's the matter? Are you afraid to find out how good you are? Well, all right. Give me my part. Here. Now, you play a soldier who has just come back from the war. You have a beard and a bandage around your head, and your eyes are all bloodshot. They, they look gorgeous in technicolor. <laughs> yes, I can see it all now. All right, I speak first. And uh, give it everything you've got, George. Okay, go ahead. Oh, my darling, you're home. Home at last. After all these months of waiting, hoping, praying. Tell me, darling, quickly, are you all right? Are you all right? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you've been shot. Yes, I can see it. You're wounded. Oh, my poor dearest. Where did they get you? Where? Where? Here. <laughs> It doesn't 
matter. I'll nurse you back to health. You'll be well and sound again, my love. You shall have every care. I'll never leave your side for a minute. You'll never be alone again. Never, never. Gee. <laughs> And it's so wonderful. Oh, darling, I'm afraid I go, I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, I mustn't cry. <laughs> Laugh. That's what I should do. Laugh. He <laughs> got your dynamite. That settles it. I'm going to call the producer right now and tell him to forget it. Oh, but, John. Oh, I'm not for that. Come in. Well, there you are, you little double-crossing picture stealer. Bill, I Why, don't... if you try to be Grable's leading man, they'll laugh you off the screen. What do you mean? Grable may see that physique and hear that voice. Why, George is a combination of Johnny Weissmuller and Frank Sinatra. Well, you're right. He sings like Weissmuller and he's built like Sinatra. <laughs> Bill, I don't want to think that you beat me out of a picture. You know, this ruins my career. I might as well throw myself in the ocean. Oh, Bill, you wouldn't do that. Yes, I will. And tomorrow they'll find me washed up on the beach. Me and a dead mackerel side by side. <laughs> the only two things in the world that have less sex appeal than George Burns. <laughs> Bill, I've been trying to tell you, you can have the part. I'm going to call Sherwood and resign. What? Sure, you're the man for the part. You're so talented, so handsome, so charming. What am I? You're so right. <laughs> And let's face it, who can love Bill Goodwin better than Betty Grable? Bill Goodwin. <laughs> See you later. Hand me the phone, Grace. I'll call Sherwood and resign. Oh, George, wait until tomorrow. I have the strangest feeling you'll change your mind. <laughs> That's why I called you, Meredith. We've got to convince George that the public demands him. Well, how can I help? Well, by getting all the men in your orchestra to write George fan letters. Well, I don't know about all of them. Well, just ask those who know how to write. Okay. <laughs> that is, uh, if a letter from my bass player will do any good. Well, you write some, too. And all my girlfriends and I will write some. Good. And then I'll hire a couple of hundred bobby stockers to wait outside tomorrow and tear George's clothes off. Oh, that'll make him... That'll sure make him a romantic figure. Well, it will if I hide his long underwear tonight. <laughs> now, let's get busy, Meredith.
Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. I have a tremendous amount of mail for your husband this morning. Oh, I know. I know. I wrote most of it. I hope it wasn't too heavy for you to carry. Oh, no. My muscles laugh at heavy weight. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the W.C. Fields of the post office. They do? Yes. I can carry such a tremendous load. <laughs> but why should you write to your husband? Aren't you two on speaking terms? Oh, yes. But I'm trying to make George a big picture star. And I want him to think these letters are from fan clubs. See, maybe your wife could organize one. My wife? Well, yes, she's, she's quite a club woman, isn't she? No, she uses her bare hands. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> oh, George! George! Look at these letters! What are they? Oh, they're fan letters, darling. Letters from adoring women all clamoring to see you on the screen. Oh, go on. Well, now, here, look. I'll read one. Now, well, listen to this. My dearest, darling dream boy... When I heard that you were coming to the screen, I kicked my husband out of the house, and now I keep your picture beneath my pillow. Well, maybe she just wanted to get rid of her husband. It's signed, Mrs. Walter Pigeon. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Oh, now look, here's another one. Uh, dear Super Wolf. Super Wolf? Yes. You're our joy boy. You great big gorgeous hunk of oomph. And from now on, we will see only your pictures. Signed, George Burns Fan Club, formerly Van Johnson Fan Club. <laughs> Holy smokes. No one could be this big a success overnight. But you're not an overnight success. You forget that for years, millions of people have listened to you on the radio. That's right. Are eagles taxed overnight? No. First, eggs must be laid. <laughs> Today, you're hatching the eggs you laid on the radio. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Gracie. I'll go over to the studio and talk this thing over with Shirley. Oh, good. Here's your coat. Now, be careful and don't let the bobby stockers mob you. Oh, don't be silly. If this were 20 years ago, maybe. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Holy smoke. They're here. Hundreds of them. Uh-huh. What did I tell you? But I can't understand it. If this were ten years ago, maybe. I'll look again. <laughs> Gee, if this were a couple of years ago, maybe. You better go out there before they tear the house down. Okay. What the heck? Maybe they like men in their late 20s. <laughs> okay, girl. Come and get them. <laughs> This is Dick Joy from the NBC Newsroom again, ladies and gentlemen. Police riot squads were rushed to the home of George Burns a few moments ago when hundreds of berserk bobby talkers fought each other for a glimpse of their latest idol. Questioned as to the secret of his amazing new power over women, Burns refused to comment. But federal authorities are investigating the possibility that he's been able to harness atomic energy in vitamin form. <laughs> Skeptics are now getting on the bandwagon, says Luella Parsons. More power to you, George Burns. <laughs> says Georgie Jessel. Producer Sherwood says he's going to play up George Burns' talent in this picture. Well, that's different. Why didn't he say he was going to use Gracie? <laughs> Her curiosity aroused by this wave of popularity, Betty Grable asked to have another look at Burns. Said Miss Grable. <laughs> Meredith, our scheme work. George has been rehearsing with Betty Grable all afternoon. Certainly sounds like he's arrived. Oh, yes. But there's one thing that worries me. What? After a love scene with George Burns, will Grable be content to go home to Harry Jane? <laughs> <laughs> That's a point. George is probably the only man living who can outkiss a trumpet player. <laughs> Those trumpet players are sure something, all right. 
One of them tried to kiss me once. <laughs> you, Margaret? Yeah. She was with Phil Stotalmy. <laughs> I say, uh, I say she was with Phil Stotalmy. <laughs> Now, let me see. Her oh, George. name. George! No, I think her name was Agnes. <laughs> no, no, I see George coming up the walk. Oh, I can't wait to take him in my arms. My big, handsome movie star. I'll just slip out the back way. <laughs> Darling, here's a kiss. Please, dear. You'll smear my makeup. <laughs> but, George, I'm so happy to see you. Must we have a display of emotions? <laughs> I've just come from the set, and really, I'm. I'm all kissed out. <laughs> oh, sit down and rest, George. I'll have dinner ready in a jiffy. Sorry, dear. I'm dining with Lana Turner. Oh, well, will I see you after dinner? No, the publicity department has arranged a full evening. I'm attending a concert with Deanna Durbin, dancing at the truck with Rita Hayworth, a cigarette at Ciro's with Lauren Bacall. <laughs> Then a little smorgasbord with Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> Won't I see you at all? Well, if you care to peek in at the Brown Derby around midnight, you may watch me stir my coffee. <laughs> oh, will you stir it? I thought you'd have Esther Williams swim around it. <laughs> Please, dear, don't be the troll. Entree. <laughs> well, George, did you go to the studio and resign? Resign. Me? And let the whole motion picture industry crash? <laughs> What's with him? Oh, I'm afraid he's gone Hollywood on us, Bill. What is it you wish, lad? My autograph? <laughs> autograph? George, it's me, Bill. Oh, George, stop being ridiculous. We're your friends. You don't have to hi-hat us. Well... I'm not appreciated around here. You may send my bags to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. If we, if we do that, what'll hold up your eyes? <laughs> oh, you big player. <laughs> oh, Bill. Bill, what am I going to do? I've lost him. My home is collapsing. Oh, Bill, you've got to bring him back to his senses. Oh, I'm sorry. He's beyond my help, Gracie. From now on, George won't listen to anyone who isn't a big shot in pictures. Yeah. yeah. Say, that's an idea. I know just the man, Georgie Jessel. He's not only a big picture producer, but he's an old friend of George's. He wouldn't want to see us break up. He's been a family man himself. So often. Well, Gracie, you better hurry over to 20th Century Fox and see him. Hello, dear. Good evening, Grace. George, uh, look at who I brought home with me. Yeah. Hiya, George, old kid. Gosh, it's great seeing you again, palsy. <laughs> Have we met before? <laughs> I've met before. This is Jessel, Georgie Jessel. We grew up together in New York. New York? Oh, yes. A settlement on the East Coast. <laughs> Yes, a small village with a few cows and seven million people. <laughs> you know darn well who I am. Wait now. I do have a vague recollection. Weren't you connected with the theater? An usher, perhaps? <laughs> now, look, George, we worked in vaudeville together. Indeed. And to think that I, a great star of the cinema, was once a mere vaudevillian. And believe me, there was nobody mirror. <laughs> Gracie, will you tell him who I am? Oh, darling, you must remember Georgie Jessel, one of the greatest vaudeville stars of all time. <laughs> How could you forget the man who used to get down on one knee and sing Mammy? <laughs> Jordan, Gracie, Al Jordan. Oh, oh, that's right. Well, darling, you must remember Georgie Jessel, one of the greatest vaudeville stars of all time. <laughs> How can you forget the man who used to puff his eyes out and sing, If You Knew Susie? <laughs> Cancer, Eddie Cancer. Oh, that's right. Well, darling, you must remember Georgie Jessel, one of the greatest vaudeville stars of all time. How could you forget the man who... who... Hey, Georgie, what did you do? I was a big, fat, blonde woman, and I sang some of these days. <laughs> well, this has all been very interesting, Mr. Hessel. Hessel? 
Jethro, J. J, as in what? You're the biggest one I've ever seen. Genius is spelled with a G, Mr. Pesco. Oh, go away from me, Pesco. Well, I should be off to the studio. I'll go inside and put on my spats and green beret. Cha-cha! But, huh? He certainly has blown his top, hasn't he? Yeah, isn't it awful? Pretending not to remember anything about vaudeville. Huh? Well, that's the biggest thing in his whole life. Well, of course it was. Ta-ta. Wait a minute. Say, that gives me an idea, Gracie. Once a vaudeville trooper, always a vaudeville trooper. Now, you just take your cue from me. Yeah, but what are you going to... <clears throat> and, Gracie, as I was telling you, we'll be the biggest thing that vaudeville ever had. Here's the billing. Jessel and Allen. That's what we'll call the act. Now, we open in one, you see? Right away, you come out to hit you with a baby spark. Jessel and Allen? What's this? Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Ta-ta, go to the studio. Now, look. <laughs> as I was saying, Gracie, you hit you with a baby spot. Now, the orchestra... Wait a minute. Just... Wait a minute. Are you planning a board for life? That's right, yes. Well, you see, you'll be busy at the studio, dear, and I have to have something to occupy my time. Yeah, but I had Come to... Come on, Gracie. Life. Now, look. I'll sit down at the piano. We'll try out the opening. Okay, I'm ready. One bright and guiding light That taught me wrong from right I found in my mother's eyes. Say, Gracie, speaking of mothers, a funny thing happened to my mother in Cleveland. Oh, really? I thought you were born in Buffalo. <laughs> Look, I got a better joke in that spot. <laughs> Much better joke. Oh, wait, Tata. What do you picture actors know about vaudeville? You take it, Gracie. Go ahead. Those baby tales she told. And a girl. That road all paved with gold I found in my mother's eyes You're going to open with that thing? Yeah, why not? Well, you ought to open with something peppy Like, bum 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 down in the garden Where the red rose grows Oh, please Hey, Papa, get out of here, will you please? You are annoying the artist Okay Just like a wandering sparrow One lonely soul Go <laughs> make a movie. Well, gee, I just thought I'd help. I'd walk the straight and narrow to reach my goal. Come on, Gracie, let's take the finish together. God gifts and from above a real unselfish love. I found in my Tell you what we'll do for an encore. Look, for an encore. Hello? Yeah, oh, just a minute. George, it's Betty Grable. Oh, hello, Betty. Look, kid, don't bother me now with that picture. I haven't got time. Yeah, but, Betty, you can get somebody almost as good. Get Flynn or Bogart. Goodbye. Now, look, I've got a great recitation for the encore. You two hum, and I'll show you how it goes. When a man does a wrong, he goes right along, and the world soon forgives and forgets. Let a girl do the same, and her head's bowed in shame, and her life is the life of the death. 